Hey there. In this video, I'm gonna show you six cool features of the Canon R7 that you probably never heard about. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Josh, I focus on videography, content creation, and of course, camera gear. So if you're into that kind of stuff, you're in the right place. So let's get going. Now, when you're changing the f-stop on your camera or the aperture, you know you can change it in one-third stop increments. So we're going from 2.8 to 3.2 to 3.5 to four. So third stop increments, but you can change this. So if you press the menu button and you go to the second tab under the camera settings, we can change this AV 1 8 stop increment and we can change that to enabled. So now if you go back out, you can see you have F4, F4 and 1 8, 2 8, 3 8 and so on. So you don't see the normal steps that you would see, like as you can see from going down from four to 2.8, you don't see F3.2, F3.5, but you get eighth stop increments instead of one third stop increments. All right, so why is this cool? Well, you have more precise adjustment, but let me show you in practice why this is different. Got the R7 set up here, and let me show you what this looks like in the camera. So generally when you make aperture changes, you can see them, they're pretty you know, significant. And for me personally, like when I'm shooting outside and the light changes and I have to change the aperture, when the camera's rolling, you can see it, it's pretty obvious. So if we turn this feature on, this eighth stop increment, it just becomes a lot more subtle as you're making the change. And so it allows you to make those changes on the fly without being as obvious. So very cool little feature. Second cool thing is the R7 has an auto leveling feature. It's a little bit limited, but it's still kind of cool. So let me show you. So if you're under the menu here under the six tab and auto level, we're going to enable that. And let me show you what this looks like in the camera. There are a couple limitations to this feature. First of which is that it has to crop in a little bit because it has to do that to counteract the reframing. It also can only self level so much and it also isn't instantaneous. So this isn't something you could run around with while you're vlogging and it keeps an automatic horizon level. So let me show you how this works. So I have this, it's fairly level right now. I'll make an adjustment and then you'll see the camera move. So if I turn it one way, you'll see it self correct. If I turn it the other way, you'll see it self correct. Show you one more time. Pretty wild. There is a limit to it, right? If I go really far, it can't make it straight. So there is a limit to how much this can be used, but uh, could be really handy in certain situations where you're setting up a tripod quickly and you might be a little bit off, but you do have to give up a little bit of crop for that to work. Before we get onto the third cool thing in this camera, I just wanna say that this video is not sponsored, but it is made possible through all of your support for hitting that subscribe button down below and also checking out the affiliate links down in the description if you wanna check out any of the gear that I use. Buying through those affiliate links don't cost you anything extra and really help out the channel. So if you're finding value in this video, please consider hitting subscribe down below. Third feature, you press the menu button here and we're gonna go over to reverse display and we can turn that on. This is super cool. And so if you've ever been filming yourself with the flip screen and you're trying to point at something and it's backwards, this reverses that. So what's on your right looks like it's on the right, what's on your left looks like it's on the left. Similar like they do in a cell phone when you're using selfie mode, but you notice like when you're doing that, it reverses the image and records that way. This records it normally, but allows you to point at things and makes it a lot easier when you're filming yourself. The fourth cool feature in this camera is that you can shoot with creative filters. And this is something that's fun to play with. Let me show you where those are and then I'll show you what they look like. So in the menu, we go under the third tab. You can see down at the bottom, it says uh, shooting creative filters, but it's grayed out. So to enable that, you have to do a couple things. You have to make sure you turn log off and you also have to be in 1080. So if we go back to here and we set our camera to FHD in 1080, now we can go over to here and we can check out the creative filters. And there's a bunch of different filters here. And for each one, you can also change the strength. So we have dream, old movies, memory, dramatic black and white, and miniature effect movies. So let me give you a few examples of these uh, creative filters.
On to number five, and if you're a CAN user, you know about the Q menu, but what's neat about the R7 is you can actually customize the Q menu. So let me show you that. So the Q menu, you press the Q button, you get all of your quick settings. But if you go under the menu and you go to the sixth tab over, you can see customize quick controls. So we can edit the layout and change what they are. So if we go under edit layout, you can select all the items to be displayed. So again, you can turn certain ones on and off which is really neat because you can customize it, but you can also rearrange it. So if we press the info button, and if we wanna move things around, like if we wanna move the autofocus, we can select it and move things around and really customize it. So that is really cool because there's some things that you want in there, there's some things that you don't want in there, maybe you like to look at it a certain way. Really cool to be able to customize that. Number six is that you can easily access the manual using the camera and your phone. So let me show you that. Now, I know a lot of people don't like to read the manual, but sometimes you have a question and you can easily find it without having to look a lot of things up. So press the menu button and we go over to the, the wrench here and number six, and we go to the manual software URL. And then we just take our phone and select that. And then we have our user manual, so we can open that up. And there you go. So often I have trouble finding manuals. I'm reading them a lot, obviously, for finding information to share with all of you. So if you're out in the field and you get stuck on something, you can access it within a few seconds. That's really cool. So those are the six cool features that I wanted to share, but I'll throw in a bonus one for you. So the seventh cool feature is the ability of the R7 to close the shutter at shutdown to cover the sensor. This is something that you may or may not know about in this camera. It's a feature that I wish every camera had because when you pop off the lens, when the sensor's covered with the shutter, it doesn't allow dust to come in and hit the sensor, keeps the sensor cleaner, especially when you're changing lenses when you're outside and those sorts of things. So if you press the menu button and you go over to the fifth tab here, shutter at shutdown, make sure that is set to closed. And so now when we turn off the camera, probably here to click, and we pop off the lens, you can see that the shutter is closed, keeping the sensor nice and clean. I'm gonna put my lens back on here. Hopefully you got a, a bunch of cool tips out of this. If you are using an R7, I think you can play around with a lot of those. And as I said before, if you enjoyed this video and you found value in it, please consider hitting subscribe down below. If you're interested in watching more videos about the R7, I have a whole bunch on my channel. You can check out this one up here, which is a full breakdown of how I set up my camera in terms of menus and settings. And also here's a full review of the R7. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.